Hi, my name is Alex Bushel. I am the CEO of Lab Improvements, and I'm here today giving a quick walkthrough of the workflow for SlideTrack. Uh, we're going to start off today in the long-term storage room. This is where the slides were traditionally brought in on trays directly from the pathologists, taken to this desk, sorted into order, and then filed into cardboard boxes onto this high-density storage shelving area. So traditionally, boxes are all hand labeled with the case number at the beginning and the case number at the end. The slides were manually sorted into what we call trays. So these are long cardboard trays where the slides are all in numerical order. Moving forward to slide track, storage is a little bit different. Each box is now labeled with a year and a box number. That was a bad one to show. There's 19, 18, 17, 16. So they're just put in ascending order. Inside each box is here's the legend for magazines. So there's a total of eight magazines and inside each magazine is four sections, A, B, C, and D. Rather than finding it, your slide in ascending order like you would normally do, traditionally, you would look it up in the system, go through the proper retrieval process under your login, and the slide track software is going to tell you where to retrieve your slides. In this case, we'll use the example of box number year 20, box 14, and we're going to say it's in magazine 6, section B. So, open these up. The magazines go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Here's magazine 6 that we're looking for. Section A, B, C, D. Now assuming the software told us that it was in... I'm just going to place this here. Assuming the software told us it was in section A, B, C, or D, we'll say D. You start at 1 here. And this is slide 50. Slide 1, slide 50. So if it was slide number 8, we would just count in. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, till we find slide 8. And there's our, our slide. That is how retrievals are done now using the slide track retrieval method. Okay, part 2 of our adventure is here with the actual slide track machine. What we're going to do is we're going to simulate coming in first thing in the morning. The machine had previously been shut off. It uh, boots up to the main screen. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to process slides. We're going to go for normal processing. This is where you can have certain modes. Say you wanted to only process cytology slides. Say you wanted to reload a magazine. But we'll just go with a normal. So the machine starts up. Robotics home, do all their start checks. So it's going to ask, do we want to resume the last magazine? So the last magazine we were working with was year 20, box 67, magazine 8. In this case, we had a magazine that was partially filled up the previous day. So we're going to say yes. It's going to ask us to scan that magazine. All these magazines are labeled in order in which the slides are processed. So here was 67.8 from yesterday. Sorry, you'll have to excuse. I'm a little clumsy trying to do this with one hand. So we've scanned it and the machine is now saying load this into slot one. So we load the partial magazine in and it now knows 67.8 is in slot one. We're going to keep going in order. So because that was magazine eight, that's the last magazine that will fill this box. Now we're going to jump to the next box, which is box 68, magazine one. So we're going to scan that with the barcode scanner. Now again, it's telling us to put it into slot number two. And it's registered. The center magazine is customized for the lab's uh, rejects or diversions if, say, pediatric samples, you don't want them filed in with the rest. 
we can kick it to there. If it's a high volume system, we can just have this as a fifth magazine so you can have additional capacity. So we're back to 68.2, 68.2. Scan that. Tell me to put it into this position. Registered. 68.3. So if you try to scan one of these out of order, it will correct you and force you to put the right one in. Okay, so we are booting up and it recognizes there was 39 processed yesterday and it's going to pick up right where it left off. So let's go close the door. That keeps all the magazines locked in. And it's flashing at us saying, please feed me. Slides are coming in from the pathologist's office. So what we like to do is just grab a handful. Obviously I'm working with one hand here. Uh, when you're actually doing this all the time, it's a little bit quicker. And I could pick a load lane. So because we're loading on the left side, it's gonna suggest this load lane. But if we wanted to, we could put them into there. So we'll start by putting some slides in. Give you a little peek under the device here. Checks the position of the previous slide and deposits it, confirming its location. So each slide that enters the device gets a full assessment of the label. So it does a barcode scan. It can also look for unique symbols, key characters, or even colors. And based on that information, it can control where it gets sorted into. Say you wanted all your negative cytology samples in here and all your positives in this one. You could split it up, the machine can recognize that. So we'll just take another small pile here. Again, this is much easier when you've got two hands and you're not trying to film at the same time. Continue to pick up. And processes. So an operator would typically come by and see that there's a small stack here in this case, there's only about 30, 40 slides ready for processing at this time, but um, you can come in and very quickly fill the machine up. So you can fit 100 on this side, 100 on this side for a total of 200. It'll load that up. It takes about five minutes. Walk away, and the device will process on its own. I can't even keep up with it here. It's uh, processing too fast for me to do with one hand. And uh, that is slide track operation in a nutshell.